in my early childhood I only had NES as gaming console. Or our it was just another Famiclone called Dengue with beautiful 9999921 cartridge gaming experience. Anyway, I deeply enjoyed playing 8 bit Nintendo games. But some of my richer friends possessed a real PC with Windows, capable of showing much more colors on screen and even allowed them to play 3D shooters and racing games. As naive as I was, I always wondered why I cannot just simply play exactly same Windows games on my NES. And nowadays, more than 20 years later, I finally have a technology, knowledge and much of free time to make this happen. Well, thanks COVID restrictions for making my child dreams come true. So, how can you run a Windows game on an S? Well, we will use a secret cartridge. If you are not new to this channel, you may already guess what we will use Google Maps 8-bit cartridge or NES Doom cartridge. If it's a total surprise for you, please watch very first video on my channel. Yes, it should be simple tough, right? Unfortunately, no. Oh no! Anyway! There are a few big problems. First of all, Windows games are built for Windows. You could not just run an .exe file on GNU Linux. Why are you running? But this problem could be simply solved with Vine. No, not this Vine, but that Vine. Basically, it's compatibility layer to run Windows programs on macOS or Linux systems. Second problem lays on Raspberry Pi itself like literally on the Pi itself, its CPU. The IRM processor is not capable of running x86 Windows binaries even if we use Vine. But this is a problem which could be simply solved with Latte Panda. Well, I mean instead of Raspberry Pi we will use Latte Panda, which is Windows development board with x86 processor. Third problem, and biggest one, is X11. What is an X11, you may ask? Well, it's beautiful legacy library straight from 80s, which is used on most Linux desktop to show and manage Windows. So, when you normally run a program with Vine on Linux, it uses X11 to show a window on the screen. But why do we care? Well, let me explain. The way PPU Squirt works is by sending graphical data to NES using hacked version of SDL2lib. Thus, mostly any game or program using normal SDL could be modified to show data on NES screen. Sadly, Vine itself does not use SDL2 for graphics, and it uses X11 library for that. But this is a problem which could be simply solved with an over-engineering. We just use SDL2 to write our own version of X11 library and build custom Vine version to use it. Sounds simple, right? Ok, enough talking, let's get something done. First of all, let's check and set up our hardware. As we want to play Windows games from 80s, we do need to install 32-bit Linux. Latte Panda comes with pre-installed Windows and just before I was ready to install Linux, Windows literally refused to die. After waiting for about 20 minutes, I choked my Panda to death. Anyway, now it's time to install Debian and it went rather smoothly. And as a final check, we run NES Doom code, also making sure what this configuration could run on low current. Now, the fun part, how do we rewrite X11 library using only SDL2? 
As an experienced software engineer, I always start by searching Stack Overflow for existing solution to copy paste. This time it's a dead end, so we try again on GitHub. A miracle! Someone already tried to do exactly the same thing, implement X11 using SDL2. It has a hard dependency on SDL GPU, which is not quite the same as SDL2, and also it's meant to work on Android. But it's a good start. We quickly check a license file and we are ready to go. It took me more than 3 months of all of my free time to complete the rewrite of X11. Even if I recorded most parts of this process, it's not particularly interesting to explain it here. Still, I already released all of my work open source on GitHub, so please check links in the description for more info. It worth mentioning though what I also ended by adapting OpenGL Mesa library to use my custom version of X11 for 3D graphics. Ok, let's assemble everything together. And before we move to the demo, two things to notice. First, there is no true audio sound from games in my current implementation, so I add soundtracks during the video editing. Second, well, let me fix one thing here. Much, much better! It looks now exactly as my gaming rig from 80s. As typical for the wine testing, we start by showcasing no pad. There are no match buttons on the NES joystick itself, but in theory we can encode DNA sequences using adenine, cytosine, guanine and timine. Next on the list is Free Furries of Microsoft. Sorry, I mean Microsoft Fury 3 trial version. I have not managed controls to work, but at least demo is self-playable. to the game which is actually playable, Earthworm Gym demo for Windows. I mapped jump to A, shoot to B and whip to start button. And to be honest, this version is much more difficult to play. Now let's test an iconic 3D shooter, Quake 2 demo for Windows. First of all, let me quickly adjust brightness. It's quite playable even if I cannot use mouse at all, 
and always die after few minutes of play. So I think it's very real console FPS experience. Next is Just Jackrabbit 0.5. Sorry, I mean Just Jackrabbit 2, but you can only see a quarter of the screen. Explanation is simple. By default, this game runs with 640 by 480 pixels in resolution, and my current setup supports up to 320 by 240 pixels at max. I haven't found so far a solution to this problem, so unfortunately this game is currently unplayable. Last but not least is Melrose Space. This is not a game, but a demo scene from late 90s. Sadly, it runs only in VGA mode, so again, you can only see a quarter of the screen. I'm not gonna do this like everybody else does it. By the end of the day, among all the games I tested, only Earthworm Jim and Quake 2 are truly playable. I want to test more games, and if you know any game fitting all the requirements shown on the screen, please let me know in the comments. Before we finish, few final thoughts and remarks. First, I feel kind of the same as NASA forgetting about radiation. I physically could not play more than 10 minutes without overheating the NES. There are few possible ways of fixing this, like using external power adapter for cartridge or built-in batteries. Second, while my cartridge should work on any unmodified NES, Latte Panda itself is too big to fit inside a normal NES cartridge. Still, it is possible in theory to build and print a custom one for Famicom console. Third, it may be obvious, but I want to be crystal clear. There is no ROM file what I could share. The whole project itself is meant to be run on custom hardware. That's all what I have to share with you today. Production of those projects and videos are incredibly time consuming. So please like this video and consider to subscribe to my channel. This would really help and keep me motivated. Till the next time, goodbye.